It has come to my attention that the homeless hostel in Bray on Sibbington Road, known as San Remo, run by the Simon organisation, and receiving state funding and private funding too, has three empty beds in the winter initiative room. It was my belief that they have been filled before now back in October. They haven't. We are now in the depths of winter. Where are the super sleuth journals on this? Nowhere. Where are the super brain politicians who know the lay of the land on this? Again, nowhere. Where are the master degree geniuses in the local authority and relevant government department on this? I weigh here is. Nowhere. In our society where we farm out responsibility to so-called experts, we don't take it upon ourselves to check their work nor to penalise them for failings. We must ultimately take responsibility for the wrongs of society. We have a brain and not to use it critically is a failure. The winter initiative was free to the four users last winter. It was the only it was only men last year. I don't know if a facility was offered to women. If not, that has discrimination. As women have it tougher on the streets than men. For either try have robbery and assault and rape and psychological terror. This prejudice against women is a crime considering that half the building is not being used. The men had access to their full facilities in the hostel seemingly, but from talking to the honest men who stayed there are not quite full access. But I have been further informed that there is a resident in the winter initiative room who is paying rent of 50 euros, inspired there being an empty room in the hostel. Is he not entitled to equitable treatment? Him being treated the same as every other service user in this hostel. Is the Simon not predicated on this fact? He has been in the winter initiative room for months now, but residents coming in to it, the hostel, and going out to new abodes. But a further kicker, is he not denying people in critical need of this bed who are on the streets? These winter initiative beds are funded directly by the county council. They are the piper and should act as so. The bed users are tenants of the council, and not the Simon. And yet the Simon overreached last year and asked questions they were not entitled to of the bed users. Only the landlord, i.e. the council, could ask them. This last point is critical as it shows abuse right from the start at the initiation of the service, a bad start, but also shows a lack of understanding of the law and protocols as well as a lack of training of staff and a failure of delegation to staff to certain responsibilities. Remember Apollo House when all the businesses, that's right, the homeless charities accused the volunteers in Apollo House of a lack of professionalism and being a danger to service users. Wakey wakey, look in the mirror Simon. Light bulb movement for everyone. The volunteers in the Apollo House and the paid staff in the Simon are both equally human. They can choose the righteous part or the wrong part. Ultimately, that's what matters. Because residents have killed themselves intentionally or accidentally in the care of homeless services. They have self-harmed. They have suffered breakdowns. And thanks to the prevalence and normalization of drugs in the hostels, many have relapsed or started on their drugs journey. San Remo is full of drugs and it has been openly used in there. Any contradiction of this fact is a lie and should call into question the character of those who propagate the lie. No textbook is going to help you, no amount of training is going to help you when it comes to interacting with your fellow troubled or vulnerable human beings. What matters is you give a damn and if you are prepared to learn and be open minded. Prepare to listen, prepare to act and confront even if that confrontation is of colleagues and management and the powers that be. You either have it or you don't. Nobody has it in any of the professional homeless agencies. But they have a very well-oiled propaganda machine. But thanks to the conformist education and repress culture, people just not along with it is state funded, yet the state demands you go cap in hand to a private, unaccountable organisation, the Five Laws, and plead your case at the capricious hands, where appeal to gain entry. This is preposterous. Taxpayers' money to fund a commitment that is part of the contract of the state to the citizen or guest, to a feudal antiquated system of law, for it is investigation and prosecution and trial all wrapped up into one. It is to my mind a throwback to the era of the landlord doubling up as the magistrate. I take great umbrage at that. Especially anyone who thinks they should go through that undue process and yet wouldn't put themselves through a legal lacuna in any avenue in their affairs. In other words, I must be sacrificed at the altar of narratives to preserve their stake in society and the cultural crutch that they align themselves with to preserve their emotional state. I hear nothing but excuses for the system, nothing but give the system umpteen chances. It doesn't have to be this way, because this way is being a party to evil. This path is the road of self-delusion. 
All it takes is the few to call out the truth. Don't deviate from it, but compound it. And corner the system in with their lies. Make them do the right thing. If you judge people as individuals are organised, by how they treat the powerless, then the state is evil. It is a statistic brain's trust. Now, I probably would have went into the winter nest of last winter, as there were three fellows I would have trusted in the room. Three fellows who I could have had a reasonable conversation with. Three fellows who wouldn't have contradicted themselves at every given time. Three fellows who would have looked out for you and given you a heads up, for they would have known from the experience of homeless services that the staff are profligate liars and disingenuous. And sadly, it turned out like that for two of them. I come from the school of thought that I always take the point of view and position of the powerless person in any relationship between humans until the truth has been resolved, as best as possible. The vast majority of people are instinctively hierarchical and hence will be sympathetic to the staff's point of view. This sadly gives a license for evil to prosper, as the staff can do no wrong. As a consequence of this, the majority of people are evil. How can it be anything else? I have my doubts this year that fellows of such calibre will probably end up in the minister, so for my sanity I will pass. But it would be nice to know that I could potentially have that option. And to have the option requires putting pressure on Wicklow County Council. Being prepared for their manipulation of English language, knowing the law and directors, knowing who is responsible, and knowing who can force them out into the open. It is a matter of increasing pressure. Start off with one Africa, turn up the next day with two Africans, then keep doubling up. 5, 10, 20, 50, etc. The question is how many people are required until the County Council do the right thing? The County Council will come up with a canard that this is the procedure as if it's set in perpetual storm. That is ludicrous. They make the decision, plus in the nature of running the stage on this island, discretion of bending and breaking the rules happen daily. Now, is the County Council funding the assignment with monies for the rental initiative? If so, it is getting nothing in return for, for it. This from the Simon Angle is corrupt. From the Council, it is at least negligent and shows it to be absurdly incompetent. How many of the management of the Council are in there only for press photos and prestige and not management? They may come out with the calumny that nobody has taken them up on the venture. I disagree. Firstly, they should publicise it through all homeless interface charities. Did they? Secondly, they the hostel went through their resident sewages in the hostel, putting out that the beds were full since October. So why bother applying? I didn't say every resident in the hostel is a stooge. Thirdly, I have spoken to several people on the streets and on the couches, who say they would avail of the beds. Maybe members of the hidden homeless would take up them up as well. The hidden homeless being those who don't engage with the charities or others on the streets. And I can't blame them. That last statement, the charities only provide a band-aid to a news and ruin caused. Yes, caused by the system. And not the surgery required. If there is a cure, why pull up a temporary alleviation? I know many give money to these charities on good faith, but let truth supersede faith. One instance, I had missed the last bus on a winter night from Don Leary to Bray. So I went around to the Bentley Hostel, which is a cross-care Catholic agency for a sleeping bag. They, as is normal for hostels, left me waiting a while outside the front door. Believe me, this can last a very long time and on a cold winter's night. Still, I should be thankful they didn't call the police with the expressed purpose to harass me, which again is normal. Don't come out with the nonsense that they didn't know who was at the front door. It's a homeless hostel. They are supposed to be designed as an organisation to deal with all kinds of people. Again, believe me, in homeless houses, the worst of the worst are treated as gods, think pedophiles. And when they said they would give me a sleeping bag if the Dublin homeless, Dublin homeless phone service instructed them to do so. In other words, the Christians had the sleeping bags, but wouldn't give it unless a third party gave them all the okay. The majority of people who funded them didn't agree to this kind of contract with the homeless community. I got the run around by the free phone, which again is not unusual, and my blood pressure started to go through the roof. I knew I was going to go around the houses and get nothing. So I abandoned the project. Now I know that most of the people out there will not along with this nar narrative and bureaucracy on questioning. You've sold your souls to the system. There's only a handful of us who know it doesn't have to be this way. A system based on lies and cruelty to the vulnerable. 
For the many want hell to continue, a few of us want a glimpse of heaven. Just say some child that gets on his high horse and claims he has sorted it out and reassures us to calm down and relax. Isn't it a good thing that they exist to intervene? Only problem is where have they been for the last three months? They may say they were working in the background, in which case they have no teeth and are useless. Not everybody who walks in this island is useless. So I'm asking these kind of people to shame the council in doing the right thing. Maybe they might say they weren't aware of it, the council. If so, they, they are in the wrong business. You always keep abreast of the latest developments in your field, the council and charities. I am reminded of Stephen Matthews, the local TD, getting in his picture in the local media, self congratulatory mode about the reopening of the toilets in the railway station after someone complained on the local internet forum. They had been closed due to the COVID scare. He is a railway employee, a member of the railway union. I'd be shocked if he isn't. Where was he up to then? It's his field, he acknowledged. He is there to represent and serve the people. It was outrageous to see facilities such as toilets were shut, and it was up to private and commercial organisations to provide toilets, if they so choose. Even charities dedicated to the homeless and addicts and marginalised, who are state-funded, had restrictions put on them. The state went over its way to strip those on the streets of dignity completely. Just think about that. The way you treat the poorest and most powerless in our society reflects your true mindset and cultural ethos. In other words, the state just uses you.